The first thing we're going to do is start with the system analysis on paper. So looking at what the work we've already done, and I'll briefly review that we here have the starting position and we see that all of the energy is a form of gravitational potential energy. And so we already know that the total energy of our system is going to actually be the gravitational energy at the start. Then at the end of the jump, we can tell that the gravitational energy is transformed into kinetic and transferred to the rubber band as elastic potential energy. And how we're going to find that is using conservation of energy. We know that the total energy from up here is still the total. And what is uh, still in gravitational energy, the leftover must be the elastic energy. So the elastic energy is going to be that total energy minus what's still in gravitational energy at the end of the jump because you are a little bit off the ground. And then of course over here we have color coded our inputs and outputs. All right, let's go to our template. So the first thing I'm going to do on my template is look at these four boxes on the right. So a really bright green screams to me that that should be the inputs that you have to put for every jumper. Still needed inputs, but maybe just the one time to set up the park. And that super bright red, that's an output, and probably we should save the bright red for the most important one. And then there's still other outputs that we need. To save time, I'm gonna jump to having that filled out. You could pause here and check that you got the same color coding scheme and units. So let's begin, and I'm gonna just work my way to the left. Starting on the right, working left. So that's starting gravitational energy we have from our system analysis, that's just MGH. So the starting gravitational energy, the mass, I'm gonna tell the computer to go over here in D3, and then multiply that by gravity. This being an experiment that we really want to go well, I am gonna use 9.8 for gravity as the strength of gravity, 9.8 newtons per kilogram, or meters per second per second. So it's MGH. Where is the height? Right here, below it. So the starting height is in D4. Hit enter, that's good. The total energy of the system, from the system analysis, we know that's just the starting energy. So I'm gonna just set it to the cell above that we just calculated. Then working our way down, the total energy of the system's always the same. So at the end, it's going to be equal to the total energy at the beginning of the system. That's an easy one. The ending gravitational energy is mgh. So we're just going to do that again. Go tell it to times 9.8. Of course, now the height is at the end. So I'm going to go grab the ending height here. And then our elastic energy from conservation of energy is actually going to be the total energy minus what is still in gravitational and whatever is left we know is the elastic energy. Okay, continuing on. Well, greens are all inputs. I'm going to start working my way from the bottom. It just sort of makes more sense to me because the ending height is pretty straightforward. The ending height is going to be the combination of our no-go zone plus the buffer. So that is going to equal the no-go zone plus the buffer, those two together will determine the ending height. Then height of jumpers and input, stretch of the bungee cord. All right, we got to look back at our system analysis and from our elastic energy lab, this is a little bit complicated. This is that one that we had to rearrange the elastic energy lab equation. So that's the square root, that's SQRT. Functions are always capital letters, so it's the square root of twice the elastic energy. So two times the elastic energy, that's back over here, divided by the spring constant. So let's go look where the spring constant is, right up here. Doesn't like it right now, but once we get numbers in, that'll work. Input inputs and the string added. It's long, but it's pretty straightforward. The string added is going to be the starting height minus everything but the string. So I'm just going to work my way from the bottom. It's going to be the ending height minus the height of the jumper minus 
the length of unstretched cord minus the stretch of the cord. Did that a little bit out of order. All right, now to check my code, I'm gonna get the mock data set provided by the teacher. And let's hop over there so you can take a look, see if you get those same numbers. And now we could be done, but there is one more thing left in the engineering portfolio for us to do. A requirement for displaying the energy bar charts at the starting position, three quarters height, one quarter height, and ending height. All right, to make bar charts in spreadsheets, we're gonna need a data table that has each of those positions and what type of energy they have. So I'm gonna to go to column in, start with just writing those four positions. Position one was at the starting height. Position two was when the jumper was at the three quarters height. Position three, so when they were at one quarter height. And then that fourth position was at the ending height. All right, and then at each of these heights, we're gonna need the energy. So that's gravitational energy, kinetic energy, and elastic energy. And to be thorough, I will also do the total energy. All right, now to figure these things out, we need to know the height of the jumper and the stretch of the jumper. So I guess I do need two more columns over here to the left that I can use in my calculation. So I'll just put height and stretch of cord. All right, so the height at the starting height, that's pretty clear, we already have that. So I'm just going to scroll over to grab that, I'll use the scroll bar. The starting height was right here at D4, so I'll click return. And then the three at three quarters, okay, so I'm gonna say equals D4 times three quarters is 0.75. So that'll give me the three quarter height. And then the one quarter height, again, that's gonna be D4 times one quarter, which is 0.25. And then our ending height, we have already found that. So I'm gonna go set that equal. I'm gonna go arrow over here till I can find it. Oh, the ending height here is at D21. Nice, now the stretch. The stretch at each of these, this is gonna be a little more tricky, a little more thought. The starting height, the stretch is gonna be zero. And at three quarters, it'll also be zero. One quarter, that's a little tricky. I gotta go back and look at my system analysis and my picture. When the jumper is one quarter high, well, similar to how we found the string, we can do that same trick. We know the starting height, and then the ending height is one quarter. And so we can take the starting height minus the ending height minus the height of the jumper. This is what we're trying to find, the stretch, so I won't subtract that. I will then also subtract the stretch of the cord and the string, sorry, not the stretch of the cord, the length of the unstretched cord and then the string added. So that's a little bit of a long equation there, but okay, so we got the starting height minus that current ending height, which I'm gonna grab right here, minus the height of the jumper i to go back over here. I think that's this one, but I'm gonna check. Yep, height of jumper. Let me go back in there and hit enter. Minus the unstretched length of the cord. Minus the string added. Okay. That makes sense. And then the stretch of the cord at the end, we know we've already calculated that. That was just right here in D. 
16, and I'm just gonna verify that's right. Yep, stretch a bungee. Nice. Okay, I'm gonna make this look a little nicer. So I'm gonna get this color coded. I'll use the second one, and this is a really important thing, so I'll color that one. I'm gonna auto. So if you go between two columns, you get that black arrow going to the right. If you click, click, it auto uh, sizes everything. I also wanna center everything and maybe vertically center it too. All right, that's looking better. I also wanna clean this up and have them all show the same number of decimal places. That looks pretty good. This column looks like it needs to be a little wider to me. And okay, these could be a little smaller and a little more compact. There we go. All right, now let's figure this out. Gravitational energy we're really good with, so that's just mgh. So I need to go find where I have mass. So I'm gonna use the scroll bar. We've already told the user to put in the mass, so that's there, mg. Again, since this is a really important one that we want to turn out right, we want to predict the future. I'm going to use a more precise value of the strength of gravity, 9.8 times the height. And that height is going to be changing, so I'm going to be using my data table over here, MGH. And I can just drag that down. Oh, something's gone wrong. Let me check that. Ah. I need to always be grabbing that same mass. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in dollar signs in front of the D3. Ah, there we go. All right, so now just looking over, again, we know that the starting gravitational energy is equal to our total energy. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that equal. And then I know my total energy is gonna be that for the whole jump. So I'm gonna set it equal to this, but I do need those dollar signs. And drag that down for the last two. And since I'm gonna work backwards here at the elastic energy, we know that equation from the elastic energy lab, and we can use it one half times the spring constant. We gotta go find that. Spring constant is right here in D13 times the current stretch, the current stretch. So I'm going to go over to my table and find the current stretch of the cord squared. So you can use shift six and do that caret two. Hit return. Now I can drag that equation down. Oh, something's gone wrong. Ah, I always need to use the same K, so I need to lock that cell. So I'm gonna put dollar signs in front of the D and 13 and drag that equation down. Okay, I don't like this, but I'm gonna wait till I figure out the kinetic energy to fix it. All right, now we have kinetic energy. Now this is a little trickier. We do have an equation for it, but we actually here need to use conservation of energy. So the kinetic energy is going to equal, I guess, the total energy minus all the other forms. So minus the gravitational and minus the elastic. And whatever's left must be kinetic. And that makes sense. It's zero. Here it should be the difference of that 17 and the 13. 14, that's about right. And then, oh, that's perfect because we know at the bottom they're temporarily stopped. So I don't like this number of digits displayed, so I'm gonna actually reduce that. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my positions. I got selected my positions and the type of energy there are in each one. I'm gonna go over to insert, chart. Ooh, I don't want a line chart. I want a bar chart. So I'm gonna go down, oh, here, column, and I want mine stacked. And there we are. 
We got our bar chart, it's labeled with positions. That's it. So I'm now just gonna drag that over. 